Hello and welcome to the third of my Euclidean sequencer videos and this one uh, covers everything new in 1.02 Now in my preview video uh, I discussed how the auto chord detection works so we can use MIDI to actually drive the sequencer and do real time manipulation of notes as you can see here as I'm playing chords on my MIDI keyboard it is actually changing the notes to conform to that chord within the MIDI sequencer. Now as of version 1.02 we've introduced a new button uh, which allows us to uh, reset the pattern when a, a, a chord is detected or when you lift your fingers and then play another three or more fingered chord. Now in certain situations that sounds a lot better than just letting the uh, the wheel cycle as it would traditionally uh, when we change chord. So I think you'll agree that's a nice enhancement to the chord auto detection feature. Now we also expose a new AU parameter uh, which you can uh, map uh, in AUM. Uh, this is simply a, a rewind uh, button which allows us to rewind the sequence just at the press of a button. Now you can either trigger this via, via MIDI or uh, however you would uh, using an external app or we can use the rewind button on the display but it, it does the same in both instances. Now this app um, crams a lot of controls into a very small space and it can sometimes be very hard to see the value of the knob you're changing uh, at the time you're changing it because your finger can obscure it. So we now have a little pop-up uh, uh, telling you what you're changing and by how much and I think you'll find that's a lot a lot easier now to read. Now another new feature that has been included to help uh, with live performances is the preset lock. Now traditionally uh, when we make changes to a pattern um, and we uh, change pattern you'll notice when we go back the changes are automatically saved for us now this is a fantastic thing but when you're performing live you might not want that you might want to return to a pattern and have it appear in a default state so by enabling the lock preset button uh, any changes you make to anything uh, on the interface will not be saved when you change pattern. So you can always guarantee that when you change to a pattern it's in a default state. Now while a preset lock is enabled, if you want to save any changes you've made to that preset, you can do so, so by simply long pressing on the pattern button and that state will be saved. So to clarify, if I make changes to say pattern one, uh, and I move to a different pattern those changes will be lost and also if I'm on pattern 1 and I make changes to it I can always press the pattern 1 button to return to the saved state now by default uh, each band of a Euclidean sequencer plays fixed notes and that's because uh, it's intended for use with percussion type instruments like drums where we select a patch and we just want to keep playing that patch now we, when we enable the auto chord detection uh, we do not want those fixed uh, notes to change so they are not transposed by default with the incoming uh, chord detection but you can actually turn those on in settings and you can even decide which bands are to be transposed and which ones are to be left alone so if you're playing a melodic type sound you want to turn on the transpose and if you play in some percussion type sound which is a particular note of a patch then you want to turn that off. Now one thing I'm trying to do with Euclidean is include as many different ways of editing the same information as possible and some ways are easier than others. For instance you can turn on the editing probability and you can tap on the uh, on a note and you can drag up and down to edit that probability and the colour between white and red uh, reflects that probability but another way we can do it now is to actually uh, enable the controller lane 
And uh, just like modulation, where we could paint in uh, modulation, if we tap and hold the, um, the controller button, as well as the five user definable controllers, we now have three other uh, properties which we can uh, use to um, alter note settings. In this case, uh, probability. Now, if I exit controller mode uh, and click on edit probability, you'll see that the colors of some of these have changed accordingly. And that is really, really handy. We can even paint velocities this way. So if I uh, draw a, a, a rising velocity ramp, you can see by the colors of the notes that go from yellow to red that they follow that velocity. And if I do a inverse uh, velocity ramp, you'll see that they've affected the notes accordingly. Now, it would take you a long time to do uh, manually, but this makes it a whole lot easier. Now, if you uh, tech note, there's now a little uh, chevron in the top corner of the controller button, and that means we can long press to edit the user definable controllers. And those are not global settings, they are changed on a per patch basis. So uh, just remember that. Now, in the last version of, uh, of the software, we introduced a new gate button uh, to each band uh, of the sequencer, and that gate button allowed us to control the actual note length. But this was global for all fixed and uh, um, sequenced notes. Uh, so now we've added a new uh, controller uh, option, uh, which allows us to actually specify a gain length on a per note basis. Um, so if I if I was to play this and just alter the gate knob, the, the global gate knob, you should hear a swell as that uh, approaches 100%. And we can achieve something similar by bringing that gate knob all the way back down and actually adding um, values to the controller lane. So basically any uh, note in the sequence that falls on this uh, event position uh, is set at these uh, gate settings. If a note doesn't have a specific gate setting, it will use the global setting. Now, one very important part of Euclidean Sequencer is the ability to randomize patterns. And uh, the way in which it does it has been changed ever so slightly. Now, if we take a closer look at the randomized dialog, you'll notice now there's an extra button at the beginning called Notes. Now, by default, this button is enabled, but obviously you can disable it for, 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 for reasons I'll come to in a minute. Now, if we try and randomize a uh, set of notes uh, and settings for the currently selected bands, um, you'll notice that uh, the wheel is changing to reflect those new notes. But if you come up with a set of notes you really like, you can turn the notes button off and just keep, say, velocity turned on and randomize a set of velocities or a set of probability for those notes uh, without actually affecting the notes. So as you can see here, I've turned on edit probability and as I randomize them, you can see the colors change to reflect that uh, randomized probability that's been added. Now my mistake there was not to change the mode from uh, steps plus sequence to just uh, sequence so that uh, it doesn't affect the, um, the events and steps within the uh, Euclidean wheel. Now, another new addition that I haven't mentioned yet is the undo button in the top right corner of this dialog. And we can always uh, press that undo button to return to the previous pattern. Um, and that is a multi-level undo. But when you exit the dialog and then reopen the dialog, uh, that undo history is lost. So uh, be sure to uh, uh, restore the best uh, of the randomizations before you leave this dialog. Now, to help with randomization, uh, if we look at the main menu uh, under settings, you'll see that there's two new additional uh, sub uh, menus here. One is for the randomization velocity range, and that allows us to set a default range so that when we press the randomize button, we get something between those values. And there's also a random probability range uh, from 1 to 100, which you can specify or change. Now, 
If you look at the randomization dialog, you can long press the relevant button as shortcuts to these settings. Um, anything, any, any button with a chevron in the top left corner has a long press functionality. It's something I'm building in all my apps of, of late. Now talking of chevrons, uh, I mentioned earlier that I'm trying to introduce as many ways of editing values as possible. And in the controller lane, you'll notice that the, um, the randomize button has a chevron on it. And uh, that allows us to randomize uh, the selected controller. Uh, so we can randomize note values and probabilities and gate values uh, or user-defined uh, CC values directly from here. And that might actually be a lot easier uh, than uh, using the randomized dialog. You can even come in here and clear the uh, the randomized options or any um, any property associated with the notes in the note grid. So that just about wraps up these uh, 1.02 uh, changes and modifications. Um, hopefully uh, you find this uh, of interest. Hopefully uh, it will explain a few things that maybe aren't explained so well in the user manual. Um, so uh, you, uh, version 1.02 shouldn't be too long. Um, it will be out probably before the end of this week. Um, so look out for that. But until next time, uh, don't forget to thumb up this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you next time.